All right, folks, we got a fun one for you today. MLM2 Pro Square and the Mevo Gen 2 versus TrackMan. Data comparison test time. Let's go. I'm gonna go hit like 100 golf balls and be back in a bit. This is exactly what we're doing for this test. We're gonna hit eight shots with a pitching wedge, eight shots with a seven iron, and eight shots with a driver for each launch monitor and compare it to the TrackMan IO results. We'll take a look at the data. I'm not gonna bore you with all 84 shots here, but let's jump into the analytics right now. Whew, that was a lot of golf balls. Uh, I'm tired. Let's dump, jump into this. I can't even talk. I'm out of breath. Let's get into some data, see what the findings are. All righty, data time. We have three launch monitors, MLM2 Pro, Square, and Mevo Gen 2 versus the TrackMan IO. So let me tell you a little bit about what we did today. I hit a lot of golf shots. I logged 84, that does not include the warm up. That does not include any sort of connectivity testing that we did before the launch monitor results were actually logged. Um, eight data points per shot. So we put ball speed, carry distance, launch angle, and spin rate down for the MLM2 Pro and the IO. That's on the same exact golf shot. Uh, that's 672 data points that I had to type in. So that was a, that was a blast. Um, but it was fun. It was fun. So let's go through here a little bit of the conditions of the test. Sharing my screen to show you. We have, again, TrackMan IO is our control variable, so to speak. Sorry for some of the stats nerd speak that I might get into here. I'm going to try to explain this as simply as possible. Uh, TrackMan IO as the control. Um, we used marked balls for each respective unit. So already given a little bit of a leg up against TrackMan. For Square, we used the Square marked balls. MLM2 Pro, we used their Chrome Soft marked balls. And then for Mevo Gen 2, we used uh, my Gamer Ball, the Pro VX left dash with the metallic sticker on it. Um, used one unit at a time. So we recorded the data point for that launch monitor as well as the TrackMan. And then we're only looking here at projectile ball data. We're not going to get into directional stuff, not getting into spin axis, no club data at all. This is airborne and forward, spin rate, ball speed, and launch angle. That's pretty much it. The carry distance is going to be spit out based on an algorithm that the software has. We're just looking at ball speed, launch angle, and spin rate today. Comment below if you want us to get into more of this in the future. We'll definitely do some further testing, but that's what we're looking at today. So let's dive into what we found here. Uh, one thing, pretty important detail I did not mention, indoor only testing, and I hit seven shots with a pitching wedge, seven shots with a seven iron, and seven shots with a driver for each of the three launch monitors. That's a lot to process. All right, let's see what this data shows here. Um, as you can see, you got a lot of data points to look at, but what we did is we ran through the average. I looked at the standard deviation, which honestly, probably going to glaze over a little bit. I don't think that's super valuable. And then we're looking at something here called the mean average error, which is a fancy way of saying this is how far off of TrackMan that launch monitor was for each of the data points. So starting with the averages. MLM2 Pro is going to be first. Ball speed, you can see that it is a little bit more than the IO. Carry distance was pretty significantly higher. Again, there's, there's variables here within the, the software algorithms that are being used, but the main thing I wanna look at is the data points that contribute to that carry distance. So launch angle was, I mean, pretty close to the IO average. Uh, 23.8 and then spin rate um, just under 10,000 
One thing to note with the MLM2 Pro is their balls were not very spinny for me. So actually a little bit lower than what I would typical, typically expect to see with a pitching wedge. Um, and then getting into the seven irons as well, a little bit lower than what I typically would have seen with my gamer ball. Um, so yeah, I mean, looking at the averages here, you can see that MLM2 Pro does pretty well with the irons, um, does well with the driver as well. We'll get into comparing it to TrackMan in just a second. So if I scroll down here, um, we don't really need to look too much at the deviation from TrackMan for just what that number is. We wanna compare it to what it looks like compared to the other launch monitors. Um, so I'll get to that in just a second when we get through all three of them. All in all here, uh, to avoid rambling too much, spin rate was a little bit lower because of the balls being used. And you know another notable finding is that the launch angle was a little bit less than TrackMan. That honestly is probably just a setup issue because it was pretty consistent. Um, okay, on to the next one. We have Square. Uh, again, seven shots with the wedge, seven shots with seven iron, seven with the driver. Um, use the square marked golf balls for this. Uh, there is not a brand on there, but it felt pretty soft and pretty spinny to me. So I, I don't know what it actually is, uh, but it was a little bit on the softer side. And that's why you're going to see some of these spin numbers a little bit elevated for a lot of the shots that I'm showing here. Um, speed was pretty much in line. Carry distance a little bit higher, mostly due to um, the ball speed being a bit higher with the square. But wedge, it was totally respectable. Uh, seven iron, totally respectable with the findings. And then driver, same thing. The speed was a little bit higher from what I, I noticed. And then the spin on the driver is where it started to become a little bit elevated compared to IO. Uh, one thing to note, MLM2 Pro captured every shot. Square actually had a misread on one of the seven for each club. So on the wedge, got complete no data read. Um, I'd rather have it read no data than make it up. So we had a misfire on a wedge, a misfire on a seven iron, and a misfire on a driver. That was actually the only launch monitor that had any missed shots period from this whole test. Okay, next up here we have the Mevo Gen 2. Looking at the averages, the speed is the same thing here, a little bit higher. Um, kind of interesting that all of the consumer price point launch monitors are a little bit higher from a ball speed standpoint. I don't have any reason why, uh, but just pretty interesting there. Um, Carry distance, you can see with Mevo, it was a little bit less with the wedge, a little more with the seven iron, um, and then pretty significantly less with the driver. One thing to note is I did configure the Mevo to be integrated with our local weather here, which is absolutely miserable. You can see in the background, it's the, uh, the pressure in the air is apparently causing the ball to fly a lot less. Uh, it's rainy and gross outside, so. Mevo, the flight scope and their software actually can pull in your live feed of what your weather is. And that's why it was, was reading out lower versus IO being in a dome environment. Um, just a fun fact there. And then another notable thing that I noticed here is the spin rate on the Mevo on the driver um, was pretty elevated. I noticed that on the square as well. So, I mean, honestly, irons and wedges with all three of these, really solid. It seems like when the ball speed started to get up there, it had a harder time capturing spin. I mean, I'm not surprised there. It kind of makes sense. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the summary of the three launch monitors. Now I want to go into this little thing called the mean average error. Um, Fun fact, I just learned what this was about an hour ago. But what we did here is if the ball speed is 170 
on the MLM2 Pro and on TrackMan, it's 173. I just took the difference of three miles an hour there and then averaged that out over the course of the seven shots. So we're just getting a read of how close was this launch monitor to TrackMan's data. The lower, the better. We're using TrackMan as our control here. We're making an assumption that TrackMan is perfect. Obviously it's not. Um, there's no launch monitor that's ever going to be perfect, but it's the best we can do from a control variable standpoint. And that's what we selected to compare to. So I've highlighted everything here of the winner in each category. I don't have carry distance because that's really just a projectile algorithm that you're looking at as a result of the number. So I, I just wanna look at the data points here and how they compare to TrackMan. Easy verdict here, Mevo, Gen 2, right, it swept the board with the pitching wedge. We have very close differential of speed, launch angle, and spin rate. Um, again, there's some variables here to consider, but there always will be. Pitching wedge, Mevo was the, the drastic winner here. Uh, with a seven iron, they were all pretty good. MLM2 Pro was actually the closest on ball speed. And then Mevo Gen 2 was closest to TrackMan with launch angle and spin rate. Launch angle is tough because some of that could be set up. I'm not really to putting too much emphasis on the launch angle side of things, but spin rate is very important, especially with irons. Um, so Mevo was the winner on the spin rate side. And then getting to driver, we actually had a pretty even split. So Mevo Gen 2 was closest to TrackMan with ball speed. Launch angle square was closest. And then spin rate, MLM2 Pro with the higher speeds was significantly better at reading spin rate. Mevo Gen 2 and square were both a little more elevated um, with the driver speeds when we got to reading out the spin rates. So, I mean, there's, there's pretty significant findings here from a Mevo being really solid on the wedges, on the seven irons, the driver, whenever you get into, you know, $1,000, $2,000 launch monitors, it's gonna have a harder time reading higher ball speeds. And obviously going up to $25,000, you're gonna see significant improvements with a TrackMan. Um, but all of these, long story short, are gonna be really solid options for you. Uh, Mevo Gen 2 is the most expensive of the bunch, but it won the most categories. So not really groundbreaking findings here. Just wanted to share what we did today with this test and bringing all the launch monitors together. Um, again, MLM2 Pro, Square, Mevo Gen 2. Details on these products can be found in the description below. This is definitely not gonna be the last test. This is just what I would call projectile testing. Um, we'll do some directional stuff. We can do some club data. Definitely comment below of anything you want to see, and we'd be happy to do it. I totally nerd out on this stuff. I'm sure I'm not the only one, but yeah, stay tuned for more. Um, this is a fun one, and we look forward to doing more of these.